Okay, hey everybody, uh, good day to you. God bless you and welcome to this family Bible study. Um, we're going to pick it up with uh, Exodus chapter 2 today. Um, in the last chapter, if you weren't with us, or even if you were with us to uh, refresh your mind <clears throat> and mine, um, there was a new king or pharaoh that arose up in Egypt that did not um, look well upon the children of Israel and was different than the pharaoh before that had appointed Joseph um, leader of his household or uh, first in charge. And the Pharaoh um, put in bondage the children of Israel and set taskmasters over them and uh, grieved them and afflicted them heavily. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, the Pharaoh had commanded all the midwives to, um, if when they were delivering the children of the Israelites, of the Hebrews, that if it was a son, that the midwives should kill them, and if it was a daughter, they should let them live. But the midwives uh, feared God, and therefore um, they uh, hid uh, away the children and gave an excuse unto Pharaoh, saying that the, uh, the Hebrew women were too lively and that the children were being delivered before they could get to them. And at the end of chapter uh, 1 and verse 22, it reads, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. And that was um, the last verse of chapter 1 of the book of Exodus. Uh, we're going to pick it up in Exodus chapter 2, verse 1. And so, God, I pray that you open eyes, open ears this day. Um, let us receive uh, the simple wisdom that you would have us receive, Father. Um, and if anything I say uh, be of God and inspired by God, I pray that you receive it. And if anything I say uh, is not of God or inspired by God or true and correct, I pray that you do not receive it. Um, we're going to ask a word of wisdom in our uh in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 1, and it reads, <clears throat> And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And this, uh, a man, this is going to be Amram, and uh, this, where it says a wife, this is going to be Yachbed, who was Amram's aunt and a daughter of Levi. If you have a companion Bible, you can check it out um, in Appendix 29, or you can read about it in Numbers 26, chapter 26, verse 59, verse 2. And the woman conceived, this being Yachbed, and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And this woman who conceived, this is going to be Yachbed, and the son that she bare is going to be Moses. Uh, Moses was the seventh from Abraham. Abraham was the seventh from Heber. Heber, the seventh from Enoch. And Enoch, the seventh from Adam. Uh, Misr at this time, Mizraim, Moses' sister, was already born. See Exodus chapter 2, verse 4. And also Aaron was already born. See Exodus chapter 7 verse 7. And this um, goodly child uh, in the Hebrew, this is tov, meaning divinely fair. And this hid him three months. Uh, this number three is the number for divine perfection. And the first of four perfect numbers being three, seven, and 10 and 12 um, 3 also standing for the Trinity being the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and of course when you have the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit you have divine perfection verse 3 and when she could no longer hide him 
she took him she took for him an ark of bulrushes this bull this word bulrushes this is going to be uh, papyrus and papyrus is a plant that was abundant across the Nile Delta and was used in ancient times as a writing surface um, sheets of such material when joined side by side uh, can be rolled up into a scroll she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch this slime is going to be um, like a mortar mix and a pitch is going to be some kind of uh, pine tar um, or something of that sort and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank and this word this flags means uh, reeds by the reeds in the reeds by the river's bank verse 4 and his sister Moses this would be Moses' sister her name is Miriam stood afar off to wit what would be done unto him or to know what would be done unto Moses to see what would happen to him verse 5 <clears throat> and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the riverside and when she saw the ark among the flags or among the reeds she sent her maid to fetch it or to retrieve it verse 6 and when she had opened it she saw the child and behold the babe wept and she had compassion on him and said this is one of the Hebrews children verse 7 then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter to be Miriam Moses' sister said to Pharaoh's daughter shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee. Question. And this is God um, allowing um, this to happen and protecting um, the children of Israel and protecting Moses to bring him forth as a type of savior to deliver the Israelites out of bondage in Egypt and into the promised land. Although Moses will not go into the promised land, he will be allowed to see it. Verse 8. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother, the child's mother being Yachbed, uh, the wife and aunt of Amram. And a daughter, she's a, she's a daughter of Levi, the child's mother, uh, Yachbed. Verse 9. <clears throat> And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Verse 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And this word Moses in Egyptian means water saved. And Moses in Hebrew being Moshe, I believe that's how you pronounce it, meaning drawn out of the water. Verse 11. And it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a he an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And this Moses it says Moses was grown. Now this means that Moses was grown and uh, fully learned uh, in the wisdom of Egypt, having grown up uh, in the very house of uh, Pharaoh's daughter, uh, probably Pharaoh's house as well. And so Moses. Uh, is fully grown and wise in the Egyptian wisdom, but not yet in the wisdom of God at this point. Verse 12. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Moses saw this happening, looked around, saw that there was no other man to help, and 
he killed him. He killed the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. <clears throat> Verse 13. And when he went out the second day, and this he is Moses, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, or were striving together, fighting, arguing. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thy fellow? Question. Verse 14. And he said, Who made thee a prince and judge over us? Question. Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? Question. And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. He thought that no one saw him kill uh, that Egyptian, but obviously the guy who survived, uh, who was being attacked, uh, definitely saw it. Uh, maybe some, obviously someone else saw it as well. Verse 15. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. And this Midian, land of Midian um, is probably uh, in the land north of the peninsula of Arabia and the word Midian means strife and this a well is a digged well and it's going to be the well of Jericho or not Jericho excuse me Jethro uh, also known as Ru Ruiel yeah Re Ruiel Excuse me. Verse 16. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters. This number seven being the number of spiritual completeness. <clears throat> and the second number in uh, the four perfect numbers being three, seven, ten, and twelve. Verse 16. Yeah, that's where we're at. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water, and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And this uh, priest of Midian is going to be Jethro, also known as, and also called Re 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 Reuel, and Reuel means friend of God in Hebrew. Verse 17. And the shepherds came and drove them away. This is probably uh, because this was the only well around for a while. And so uh, the shepherds were probably worried about their flocks and kind of being a little bit greedy. <clears throat> but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Moses doing the right thing, looking out for, for people who can't really stand up for themselves. Verse 18. And when they came to Reuel, their f being Jethro, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? Question. Verse 19. And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also drew water enough for us, and watered the flock. Verse 20. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Question. Why is it that ye have left the man? Question. Call him that he may eat bread. Where he's saying, Where is this guy? Why did you leave him back there? Call him up so he may come and eat with us. Verse 21. And Moses was content to dwell with, with the man being Jethro or Reuel. And he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter, meaning he gave her to wife. Verse 22. And she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And this word Gershom meaning a stranger or exile, and he's going to be the eldest son of Moses and Zipporah. Verse 
and this word content meaning well pleased content to dwell or he was well pleased he was well pleased to dwell with Jethro or Reuel verse 23 and it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage this word sighed in the Hebrew the Hebrew word is a knock and it means under pressure of evil and they cried and their cry came up unto God by the reason of bondage and this word uh, cry or they cried in the Hebrew is zeak and it means with a loud voice from sorrow or fear and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. This word cry in the Hebrew is sheva. Sheva. And it means for help in distress. <clears throat> Verse 24. And God heard their groaning. This word groaning in the Hebrew is naak. And it denotes heavy affliction. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God always uh, remembers. Some, sometimes he'll want you to remind him. Um, and what reminded God was the crying out loud of the Israelites because of reason of the bondage. Uh, that the Egyptians, the taskmasters, had put on them. Verse 25. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. And because of their crying, God, God is going to... Uh, he heard their groaning, and He's going to intervene. And he's already having that. He's already planning that by uh, raising up Moses to do this and putting Moses in the right position. Um, say, first of all, saving him alive from the commandment of the Pharaoh to kill all the sons of the Israelite women, the Hebrew women. All right, um, that's the end of chapter two, and gonna conclude just today's Bible study. Um, I'm glad you joined us. And I love you because you love studying the Word of God in depth. And more importantly, God really loves you for that. And when He looks down and sees you reading the letter that He sent to you, uh, it makes His day. And blessings will follow. Um, don't miss the next lecture. Uh, it's getting exciting. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to find out what happens. Alright, love you. See you later.